Desiring a good work-life balance is something that a lot of us have. A lot of us have also struggled with getting that balance between work and life because sometimes it just seems like these two can't go together. It feels like you always have to sacrifice your life outside work so that your work can be excellent or you have to slack on your work to have a good life outside of work and to an extent this is true but it's also important to learn how to balance it it can be balanced 50 50 but sometimes work might be 70 your life might be 30 and some other times vice versa Last year was my most difficult year in my life and it was also my first year as a doctor. I struggled a lot with balancing my personal life and my work life and I ended up devoting most of my time to work. But there were some good days, there were some good units, some good departments that I worked in that allowed me to balance my life properly. And I want to share the tips that I used during those periods to help you if you're struggling with balancing your work life and your personal life, okay? So let's get into the video. My first tip is wake up earlier and have personal time before work. This doesn't have to be waking up at 4 a.m. or at 3 a.m. But if you usually wake up at 6, even you can wake up at 5.30, or if you wake up at 7 or 8, you wake up at 7.30, give yourself some extra time to, you know, get up from bed slowly, get a cup of coffee, if you drink coffee or tea, listen to a podcast, you know, like dance and slowly prepare yourself for work. Instead of just waking up at 8 o'clock and you're supposed to be at work at 8.15 and you just wake up and you're rushing, what am I supposed to do? It is important that you give yourself personal time. It's important that you invest in yourself and you do things that you love for yourself before you go to work and you spend your time working on another project that is not you. So you have to fill yourself up before you go and give part of yourself to your work. So it's important that you spend that quality time with yourself in the morning. So this was difficult for me to do at first and in some departments when I was working as a doctor. When I was working in some units, I was not able to apply this because let's say I'm on call for the whole week. So probably at 3 a.m. they've called me for something in the hospital and I can't sleep and maybe I get to sleep at 4 a.m. and I'm supposed to be at work at like maybe 7 or 8 to, you know, prepare for the day's work. So I was not able to practice this when I was in such stressful units. But in some less stressful departments, for me, internal medicine, sometimes I go to work at 9, sometimes say by 10, because we might have, you know, some webinars, some online meetings before we actually start rounds. So I had the personal time to, you know, wake up, make something for myself to eat and take care of myself. I was able to do this and I really had a good time. So doing this was able to help me balance my work and my personal life. The second point I have for you is that you take some strategic steps to ensure that you don't have to go to work extra early. So if you're supposed to be at work at 9 o'clock, you need to ensure that going to work at 9 o'clock is okay for you. Not that you have a backlog of work waiting for you from yesterday so you need to go to work as early as seven so you start doing yesterday's work so for me i like to go to work early when i wake up in the morning i don't see anything i don't see the reason why i should just stay at home and just um not do anything or just get an extra sleep i feel like i should just get up prepare and go to work but one thing i like to do i like to come back from work early Yes, I come back from work early and I plan certain things that I am going to do at work the next morning. So for me, it is the reverse. So if I have some results of some patients to retrieve, I may not go retrieve it that afternoon. I will go to work early in the morning. So I get to close from work early and get to do some personal things for myself. So for you, it might be the other way around. You have to, you know, stay back at work, stay late to, if you're supposed to close by 4, maybe you, might, you can leave by 4.30 or 5 because you are trying to do some extra things that will ensure that the next morning you'll be relaxed and you will not have to rush to work. 
for me i didn't see it as rushing to work i enjoyed going to work early getting my patients results doing pre-rounds you know all these things for my patients in the morning instead of staying late and doing it in the evening because usually after work i'm very tired but in the morning i'm very energetic to do these things so if there are certain things that you can do to help yourself ensure that you don't have to go to work too early to do some backlog of work or you don't have to stay at work too late you pick the one that works best for you so it's not that you're rushing to work early in the morning and you're also staying late this is what happens when you don't plan you go to work as early as seven when you're supposed to be at work at nine you're doing work that's supposed to be carried over from yesterday till today and you also don't finish the work and you also stay back at work to finish you have to pick one and devote one time of the day to complete certain aspects of work number three you have to plan you have to plan you have to plan almost every hour of work from when you wake up in the morning eight o'clock nine o'clock ten o'clock you need to plan what you are going to do throughout the day yes if you want to attend a meeting by 10 you put it in if you have a class by 11 you put it in if you want to go out by maybe four you put it in you make sure that your whole day is planned so you don't don't spend time doing extra um, work or errands that you should not be doing or you don't spend your time just pressing your phone aimlessly something I've noticed that I was also doing at a point was that when I'm so tired from work I just spend most of my time pressing my phone and then I feel like oh I've not done anything today or oh, I feel like work is draining me but the time that I was supposed to use to do something else to plan to do something else I just spent it pressing my phone and then I just feel down and feel tired and even more drained and then the day just goes by so fast and before you know it, it's morning again because you spend most of your time pressing your phone but instead if you plan that okay after work by 4 I am going to cook and after cooking I'll spend one hour watching a movie and then I'll spend one hour pressing my phone and then I'm going to spend another hour reading I feel like this is really going to help you if you can plan every hour or almost every hour of the day it's also important to have a to-do list first of all ticking things off your to-do list feels very good to see that you're accomplishing something and the more you accomplish the more you desire to accomplish even more so have a to-do list so you know what to do so whenever you're free and you're like okay i don't have anything to do now instead of going to press your phone aimlessly you can look at that to-do list and say oh okay i can do this now I can do that now and at the end of the day you have a very productive day the fourth tip is that you are intentional about the life part of the work-life balance for work you cannot really control it because you're supposed to be out of maybe by seven and close by four and work can drain you you don't have a choice you have to go you have to devote your time your energy into work and then by four you're now tired you feel like oh let me just go and rest no it is very important that you strategize time for life strategize and plan time to go out plan time to hang out with friends plan time to watch movies to do leisure activities and take it seriously something i did when i was doing my house job was that on some days when i come back from work and i'm tired I tell myself I am going to go out regardless of how I feel. If I've been able to give this amount of time and energy to work, I should be able to give a good amount of energy to life also so that I have the balance because at the end of the day, at night I'm going to rest. And that's because I know that even when I go back home immediately, I may just lay in bed, pressing my phone, watching a movie. So why not just go out with that friend that you've been delaying the appointment with or that you've been procrastinating on going out with go visit that place that you've always wanted to go to go to that restaurant that you've always wanted to eat in just plan it you have to be very intentional about your social life and this really helps me like when i speak to some of my friends and i'm always like oh let's go out and they're like are you not tired i'm tired but i need to put as much energy into going out as much as i do into work so this really helped me to create that balance for myself. My next tip is that it is important that you know when to rest, know when to put your laptop 
down, know when to say, okay, I have reached my maximum and I cannot continue working for today and choose to rest. Resting is very important because if you are drained, if you're exhausted, you will not be able to give your best into work and into your social life, into your family life, into your personal life. So it's important that you know when to rest. It's important that you know when to leave work, past work hours. It's important that you are very strategic with your time and how you feel and say okay i think i've had enough work for today let me do something to compensate let me reward myself with something my last tip is going to be reduce your time on social media it's so important for us to drain and drown and fall into a deep hole by just scrolling through our phones you start scrolling by two o'clock and before you know it it is 7 p.m and you have just been on instagram you guys it is so important to limit your social media time something i do is that every week my phone gives me updates on the amount of screen time that i have i know how long i spend on my phone and some weeks it's just just unbelievable that I spend over eight hours or nine hours on my phone and I'm just like what is happening sometimes I feel so proud when I see my screen time for the week and I spend an average of three hours on my phone I feel good on like when I see I've spent about eight hours on my phone in a day I'm like what's happening but then it's very important to limit your time on social media and try to do other things that don't revolve around pressing your phone try to schedule other activities other forms of leisure and rest that do not revolve around being on social media being on instagram being on facebook this will help you to be more productive sometimes i used to say oh i'm getting inspiration from being on social media but inspiration for eight hours sorry inspiration for almost four hours just scrolling in the name of inspiration when are you going to actually implement what you have learned or what you have been inspired to do if you just keep on spending all your time on social media so this is what has been able to help me manage my life my work life my personal life these are things that i'm still trying to implement and i feel like these are things that are also going to help you too so if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up share it with anyone that you think will need it subscribe to my youtube channel if you have not also leave a comment down below if you have any questions for me and i would love to answer your questions so guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video Bye bye